These are not the best of conditions, but for these knights of the highway, hauling a multi-million dollar spacecraft more than 800 miles is all in a day's work. They're carrying NASA's next planet hunter, TESS. TESS stands for Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Its job is to search for habitable planets outside our solar system, but close enough to study. That's because we're not just looking for planets, we're looking for life. And the first leg of this spacecraft's journey to orbit is the ride to NASA's Kennedy Space Center. So we left yesterday at uh, Dulles. We left at 10.15 in the morning. We ran into a accident on 95, horrible weather, rain um, down through Richmond. The 16-hour road trip from Virginia to Florida wasn't easy, and protecting this one-of-a-kind spacecraft during its move was vital. Its shipping container is designed to keep tests safe on the road. The case gets used for a number of missions. It's mounted on some shock absorbing bumpers so that we don't see a lot of the road noise getting into the spacecraft while we transit. We don't want any humidity inside. We don't want the temperature to change. So we have an air conditioning system as well. So we're just trying to keep it environmentally stable on the trip. And then we have very sensitive science instruments. So we actually provide a nitrogen purge. We spray nitrogen gas in to make sure that no air gets in contact with some of the sensitive components. TESS has safely made it to Kennedy, where it is immediately taken to the payload hazardous servicing facility. But the job of keeping it clean is far from over. TESS has really strict contamination control requirements. So what we've done is uh, created a clean enclosure in, inside the high bay that acts like a clean room within a clean room, basically. This is a unique mission full of first-time events that are sure to be a challenge. TESS isn't like another mission. We haven't done another test. This is the first of its kind. The time has come for this diverse team to put years of planning into practice as they begin the countdown to T0. We've had a period of hard work that lasted for years, and when we finally get to the point of launch, it's very exciting. This is where the fun begins after we've gotten through all the early legwork and the planning, that we are actually going to now prepare a spacecraft for launch. Building on the groundbreaking discoveries of the Kepler mission, TESS has scientists across the world excited about its possibilities. TESS is probably one of the most interesting spacecrafts that I've ever worked on in my career because of the science it's bringing back down to Earth. It's taking science fiction to science fact. TESS will use the transit method to hunt for the telltale signs of planets orbiting other stars. In the transit method, the spacecraft watches the sky, and when a planet passes in front of a star, the star's light briefly dims. But Kepler only looked at one portion of the sky. TESS is taking this search to a whole new level. What TESS is going to do is look around the entire sky around us uh, to find stars nearby, much closer, 10 times closer than Kepler. The really exciting part about this is it's the first all-sky survey of this type, using the transiting method to look for Earth-sized and super-Earth planets. I think the real interest by the public in exoplanets is that everyone has a dream that there's an Earth analog out there, uh, another planet that it has the ability to have an atmosphere and water and, and sustain life on it. That, of course, is the ultimate sort of goal of uh, exoplanet science. When all the pre-launch tests, inspections, cleaning and checkouts are done, it's time for TESS to join up with its launch vehicle, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. This is a critical process, and it begins with encapsulation. This is the Falcon 9 payload fairing. Its smooth aerodynamic profile will give TESS a safe ride through the extreme heat and pressure of the climb to space. The vehicle systems engineer in NASA's launch services program plays a critical role in bringing the spacecraft and rocket together. We have our hands in just about everything. We have to know enough about each system to know how they all interact together. And we have to know how the vehicle acts or operates as a whole. So that's how uh, critical the vehicle system engineer is in this whole process. We've been working very closely with SpaceX from the start. Even when um, during their design phase and, and going through the whole certification process, the vehicle system engineer was integral in that role to understand what's going on with the, uh, the SpaceX launch vehicle and how the NASA team can supplement a lot of what's going on. The fairing is in one piece as it arrives at the door to the high bay. 
Inside, the test spacecraft is ready and waiting for encapsulation. What's exciting about encapsulation is it's one of the last few things we, are, we do to prepare the spacecraft to get ready to go on the launch vehicle. It's exciting because you know we're going to be launching in a few days, which is the most exciting part of working this mission for the past couple of years. TESS has to be ready for prime time when it gets into orbit, which means the last of its covers used during processing have to come off. Once TESS is inside the fairing, it won't be seen again on Earth. The payload fairing has been opened into two halves and they're positioned on either side of TESS. The spacecraft is surrounded. Slowly and carefully, the fairings are moved into position until TESS is locked inside. Encapsulated decision has just been completed. Right now they're getting ready to lift the spacecraft, the encapsulated spacecraft, onto the trailer, which they'll then transfer it to the launch site. And from there, they'll make the encapsulated spacecraft to the launch vehicle, and at that point, that's the last major thing before we get ready to launch, and that is exciting. A specialized transporter rolls into the processing facility's high bay. It's here to take the payload fairing and its precious cargo to be attached to the Falcon 9 rocket. Getting TESS to this point was no small feat. It took several teams working closely together to ensure every system and every piece of hardware are ready for this mission. With the crane doing the heavy lifting, the fairing rises off the floor. It's guided toward the transporter, with team members helping every inch of the way. The fairing must be attached securely to the transporter for the final miles of its journey on Earth. There is no margin for error. The Falcon 9 rocket is waiting. The Falcon 9 for the test mission is a new launch vehicle. We are planning to recover the first stage from the test mission on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. If successful, this will be the 24th successful booster landing for SpaceX. By recovering first stages, not only do we understand more about our launch vehicle, it also enables us to reuse and refly that hardware which is a key part of the SpaceX mission. The fully assembled Falcon 9 rocket, with TESS on board, rolls out of the hangar at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Its final stop, the launch pad. The SpaceX team is really proud to be part of such a cool mission, the TESS mission. The TESS satellite is looking for planets outside of our solar system in our galaxy, which aligns very well with the SpaceX vision to make life multiplanetary. To prepare for the rocket to be vertical on the pad today, the engineering team in the hangar did those final last checks. We mated the fairing to the rocket, and once the launch vehicle was finally checked out, the rocket rolled out of the hangar late last night and went vertical early this morning. TESS is healthy. The Falcon 9 rocket stands ready. It's time for the final countdown. So launch day is a pretty, a pretty incredible day. Those last few minutes, you're just holding your breath. You find yourself holding your breath until you, know, you get that T0 count. I lead a team of LSP engineers to successfully launch our spacecraft into orbit. The SpaceX team has partnered with the NASA Launch Services Program, uh, NASA Goddard, Orbital ATK, and MIT to enable that planet-finding mission. We go on console about maybe three and a half to four hours prior to launch. We do our voice checks to make sure we can activate and we have all the voice channels that we need to listen. We're listening to at any one point in time, maybe six, seven voice channels at the same time. So you're kind of training your ears to listen for your, your call sign. The team has a great responsibility to be able to look at all this data and say, yes, we are go for launch. LD, go for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. Three, two, one, zero. Lift off. The SpaceX Falcon 9 carrying tests. T minus three. Engine start. Two.
one, 